Anybody else walks in, there's hands up, handouts on the table over there. If you can make sure they get one. Is this head in the way? We're on up here. You ready? Mic's on. Everything's ready. Okay. Good morning. I'm Mike Garrett. I'm Good Shepherd's treasurer. I became treasurer in February 2024, uh, just after last year's annual meeting. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge Amy McGlory, who's sitting next to me, who's our financial administrator, and also the members of the vestry and the finance committee who are here this morning would all make up a good part of the audience. <laughs> what we'd like to accomplish this morning uh, is to prepare for the stewardship campaign by providing you with information about the 2024 budget, which I will do, and then to give you a snapshot of next year's budget, which Amy will do. The 2025 budget will not be finalized until the pledge results are in, and the final version will be presented at the parish annual meeting in January. Amy's and my task today is to provide you with information to help you make an informed decision with regard to your stewardship of Good Shepherd. It's very important to the rector, the vestry, and the rest of the leadership of Good Shepherd that members of the parish understand our financial situation. One of our primary goals here is transparency. We want you to have access to the same financial information that goes to the vestry. The only numbers we won't discuss today are specific salaries and benefits in respect to the privacy of Good Shepherd's employees. Let's take a look at the handout. And if you go to page six, you'll see that for 2024, the vestry budgeted a deficit of almost $35,000. The hope was that new pledges and windfall gifts during the year might make up some or all of that deficit. This is the budget that was presented and adopted at the annual meeting this past January. Now let's go back to page one and look at some of the actual numbers. Again, this is for 2024, the current year. Our pledge in income was budgeted at $446,000, and we're expecting that number to be achieved by December 31. Total pledges were actually about $475,000, but we used about $20,000 in prepaid 2024 pledges to help fund the 2023 budget. Also, we discount the total pledge budget by a small amount to provide for any unpaid pledge balances. You will see that again, we budgeted $20,000 in 2024 for prepaid pledges. That's a line in the budget. That means we were planning to use 2025 pledges that folks would prepay in late 2024, most likely for they would do that for tax reasons. When we met with our auditor in the early summer, he noted that our use of pre, that we use prepay pledges and he strongly advised against it. Specifically, he commented that we are legally obliged to use the con contributed income in the year for which it is intended. So that put a $20,000 hole in our 2024 income projections. <clears throat> However, that's good news for 2025, since we won't be subtracting any prepaid pledges from the 2025 pledge total. Just above the pledge section, you'll see that we are projecting income from the collection plate at 17,000 versus a budget of 30,000. 
We had budgeted based on actual plate income for 2023, but unfortunately we lost a person who'd been putting significant sums into the plate every month. So our income budget of 525,000 is projected to come in at $486,000, but that's before the special mid-year challenge fund. Good Shepherd's response to the mid-year challenge was amazingly generous and brought in $81,500, making our total income, projected income for 2024, $568,000 or about $42,000 over budget. Now, if we go to the 2024 financial uh, for expenses, it starts on page two. It will not surprise you that the biggest portion of our expense budget is in salaries and benefits. While we haven't listed salaries, we have listed the funded positions on the staff so that you can see the list of folks who are essential to ministering and administering Good Shepherd in a way that serves us all. Our biggest expense challenge, as you all know, was in the buildings and grounds area. We're in a 40-year-old building that is definitely showing its age. If you go to the building repair and maintenance line on page four, you'll see that we're anticipating expenses of $35,000 against a budget of $8,520. That's largely due, of course, to the leak in the basement early this year, which required very expensive repairs. The only other expense item I would point out is the diocesan pledge, which we are estimating will be about $11,000 over budget. Very simply, every church in the Diocese of Colorado is expected to send 10% of each month's plate and pledge receipts to the diocese. The reason our estimated pledge has increased is paradoxically because of the success of the Mid-Year Challenge. We raised $81,500 for the challenge and 10% of that will go to the diocese. Bottom line, with anticipated income of $567,000 and expenses of $589,000 or $22,000 over the budget, we are anticipating a deficit for 2024 of roughly that same amount, or $22,000. It's unfortunate that we're still looking at a deficit, but without the mid-year challenge, that deficit would have been more like $100,000. This should give you a sense of the financial challenges the Good Shepherd faces. How the parish responds to the stewardship call will in fact determine what we can or can't accomplish in 2025. So are there any questions about the current year's budget? If there are no questions, then uh, I'll turn it over to Amy to talk about the 2025 draft budget. You don't have to take a vote. <laughs> no Not voting yet. yet. Um, <clears throat> So I'm gonna focus on the last column so you guys can not worry about the headers, but um, I prefer to do expenses first and then we can go back and say, how do we get there? So um, starting on page two, we are asking to add a new position for a youth uh, minister, youth leader. Um, so that it would be a new position. Um, in addition, we're asking for a 3% increase for staff. Um, that is our best guess at this point. Um, the only other thing that I'm gonna point out, as you can see next to the numbers, there's words of things that are happening in those columns, why it might be greater than the previous year, um, is on the buildings and grounds. Once again, on page four, um, we are planning to resurface the parking lot again um, and to fix the skylight. Um, and the skylight, if you didn't know we had one, is in the stairs that goes down to the basement and it's leaking and you can see the paint peeling off the walls. So that is something that and, needs and, to be and addressed. And those two items come up to maybe yeah, eight or 10,000. Correct. Estimated. So the, the 20s in there 
I won't build it to ground all speed for animals on the finance committee. There are 20 of them there because we know it's 30 plus year old building and we know things are going to play. So is it enough? We, we hope. We hope so with a prayer. You know, and it could be like last year, you have some pumps that break and have to be replaced, but it was just our best guess is to put in. You can see the last year because they tried to like balance the budget. They only had eighty five hundred dollars in there, which was like maybe identifying just what was known. Correct. With no unknowns. So this is basically, basically double probably what we can visibly see. We have gotten the uh, the, the gracious contributions from some of the membership and some and some uh, elbow grease from some others. We think we fixed the big. Uh, 95% I say of the flooding issue in Gary's office. Correct. So we think that's behind us now. It's, you take a look out there. It's very it's a, nice. Yeah, it's absolutely it's gorgeous. So. That really saved, that really brought this number. We had a bigger number in this, but because of that, the help we got and the, and the gifts we got from people, uh, we were able to say maybe 20,000 is, is a decent number. Say so. so who so if you go to the very last page, page six, and go below the bottom line, you'll see something that says Capital Asset Fund would like to start funding of $15,000. Um, let me just say it, it makes the treasurer nervous <laughs> that this number is not larger. We spent $35,000 this year. It's a 40-year-old church, 40-year-old structure. And to me, it would seem prudent to have either in reserves or in the actual budget, a total amount that was at least equal to what we spent last year. We don't know what problems might come up. But it's fairly predictable, it seems to me, that there will be other problems that will need to be funded. And so as we go through the year, uh, what I fear is that we are going to be reporting back that the number in the budget isn't adequate for what we need to spend. So that's just from a treasurer's standpoint what makes probably the single thing that makes me most nervous about this budget. But this 15,000 that's here, that's below it, our current budget, right? Right. We're, it's it's we're, not in the budget. It's just a footnote. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's a footnote along with the, right below that, um, we have starting a reserve for our wind and hail deductible. Um, we did a deep dive into the insurance, making sure that we had the proper coverage, understanding the policy better. Could we raise the deductible? Could we decrease the umbrella? And after multiple conversations, um, we're keeping the policy where it is. So that $41,000 that we have to pay, that's the best deal we can get at this time. But our wind and hail deductible is 1% of the value of the building. Do the math backwards. This is a $6 million building in the eyes of the insurance if they had to replace it. So um, knock on wood, we don't need it, but that would be a huge chunk of money that we would have to raise if we had wind and hail damage. Um, we'd have to come up with $60,000. So um, the, those are dream buckets that we need to get filled. We're not including them in this budget. It's an FYI to the parish of, hey, just like you, your insurance, if you were to have wind and hail damage, call your insurance company and you're gonna go, oh, I have to come up with how much? <laughs> so um, those are the things. So. Looking at this, um, we are projecting expenses of about $624,000. So if you go back to page one, we have to come up with a plug number. So um, we're keeping plate and pledge very similar to what we expect to get this year. Um, the bottom section under miscellaneous income, um, most of that is staying the same. There's a couple things we're not going to bank on. We're not going to budget for memorial gifts. We hope nobody dies, but we, that's not something you really should be budgeting for. Um, and so it comes down to what can we, the plug number, which is, a, which is the pledge number. And the way we get this to get almost balanced is we need $600,000 in pledges. Discounted there is listed at the 585. 
It is a chunk of change, yes, we know. It's more than what we got last year in pledges. It's more than we got with the mid-year challenge. And so we're asking everyone to think about your giving and to help us get there. Um, there's a couple reasons why we're here. Um, we, during COVID, were fortunate to get PPP funds. We got both rounds. Um, we didn't have to ask the parish to raise their pledges because that, those funds were able to help cover expenses as well as payroll and salary. Um, we have not asked for raises and pledges and unfortunately, as with the mid-year challenge, we are asking for you guys to commit more um, to help us reach this battle, uh, balanced budget. Any questions? We're making the assumption there's no new pledges coming in or membership or do we know? Is that any part of the equation? It, at this point, it's just a dollar amount. So um, we hope that new people will give. We hope that existing people that have the capacity can give more. Um, we do understand, you know, with an aging parish, there are some people that can't. You guys are, might be stuck on a fixed income. We understand that. And if you can't stretch, that's understandable. Um, but those that can stretch, we are asking them to help us get there. Isn't it true, too, though, to, to Kurt's point, is that if people arrive, our experience is that if people arrive each year, they don't pledge, they just put it into the plate and then they pledge the, the next year. Yeah. Um, so uh, that pledge number probably wouldn't change much mm -hmm. uh, during the year, the plate might go. So we had how many pledging units last year, 140 ish? 134. Okay. 137. Okay. We're hopeful that. Wait, we, we, or at least hold steady. Yeah, because, you know, it, it's how many people left versus how many new people came in. Um, we do have some new families that gave to the new year, the mid-year challenge. Um, so that is helpful if they are still here. Hopefully they will continue and they will actually Good. pledge this year. Um, so, yes. I think it's important to point out what you did last time that, well, two things. One, if you, if you look at your pledge from last year, this is like a 30% jump or something. Mm -hmm. But if you add your did your donation, then it's closer to 10. Correct. And if we had been asking for 10% more for the last three years, it would, it would be- We'd be in a different position. Same old, same old. Okay. So it, it seems like a big shocking number, but if you look at it from a different lens, it's not as, as crazy as it looks. Yeah. If, if you take last year's pledges of 475 and add roughly $82,000 in challenge funds to that, it's 557. So the jump becomes from 557 to 600. Which is about 10%. Yeah. So it's, you know, it, I mean, it sounds outrageous until you look at that piece of it. And I, and I think it's parallel to pre COVID cost of living to now. Yeah. It's not uncommon to see things 25, 30 percent more. So yeah. now, can everybody afford it? I don't know. So I mean, I think right. it's, there's no fat in here, I guess. That's what I want to emphasize, right? Right. Right. Off, off of yeah. So finance committee has read it this. Mike and I have discussed this. Gary has discussed this. Uh, Vestry has looked at this. Um, you know, it, as I said, we dug deep into that insurance number because that is a big number. Um, and we're not asking for outrageous pay raises for the staff, but we are asking for a youth leader because that is what um, people in this parish have indicated that we need. We need to get our children and our youth program back that helps to grow numbers as well. You budget a part time. It is right? very, yes. very part time. Position. Yes. Pretty yep. Uh, yeah, at this point, it's three or four. Yeah. Right. But we have some rising, um, and yes, yes. we're we're looking to do things with other parishes, um, and we need somebody to help coordinate that for our youth, and to help the parents out. <laughs> yeah, if, 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 if we had sort of kept pace without the PPP money in there, sort of kept pace, and the the, the, the increase in salaries and benefits, even with the youth, is only about three and a half percent. So, you know, it's, it's that we haven't kept pace with all of the other stuff, especially the building, and the insurance stuff that keeps growing up. Yeah. That's where all of this is, that 
there is, as, as we said, there's no vacuum. This is a, this is a this is still a lean budget uh, in terms of what we're going to store in cash. Well, and if you look at your house insurance yep. and your car insurance, they put that skyrocket. So you know that there's no reason to think our student here yeah. is building. But <laughs> we are not sure. exempt. Yes. I hope you were very blessed in that we have many members who are willing to do hard sweat efforts. Yes. And much of our building and ground work is being done oh, as a gift to the parish. Mm -hmm. As someone else, some contribution to the parish. And it's not costing us. Correct. Yeah. It's not somebody else's profit. Yeah. Yeah. And so it goes. Yeah, and it's from mowing the lawn, it's to changing light bulbs, it's to, I can go buy that battery and not have them mark it up for us to replace that type of battery. Oh, we can replace furnace filters, we can do the work outside Gary's window. I mean, our buildings and grounds could easily be forty-five, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year if we did not have help. Wow, that's worth advertising, mm -hmm. publicizing yeah. that network. So let me say a, a word about um, youth program. I, I was fortunate enough to go as a delegate to the diocesan convention. And one of the most, I thought, one of the most inspiring sessions at the convention was uh, a series of talks by youth um, who were involved in various youth programs in the diocese. Um, it was so wonderful to hear young people talking about their experiences, their church, their religion, and what these programs meant to them. Um, it would be wonderful for that kind of program to exist here at Good Shepherd. And as I think Amy said, or others said, um, it makes Good Shepherd a more attractive place for young families with kids who'd be in the youth program. So it seems to me really important if we want to keep building Good Shepherd um, that we have a, a good youth program it makes a big difference. So just a, a couple of words because about what we're doing, for those of you who don't know, in the South there's going to be a Halloween party downstairs. We only have like three or four. They wanted to do this. And so we've invited other small churches to join us. This happens to be Quest Weekend, so a lot of kids are off on, on the diocesan stuff this weekend. But uh, there are other, you know, um, uh, uh, St. Gregory's in, in uh, Littleton, uh, St. Mark, uh, St. Philip's, yeah, in the field down in um, Sedalia, St. Matthew's. Um, there are other churches that say, yeah, we've got a small group we would like to partner with you too on an occasional basis. So there's interest in doing that, but right now it's being um, sort of pushed forward by volunteers. And this is where to have somebody who is being compensated for doing all that work makes sense. Um, and compensated and, and therefore uh, accountable. Yeah, well, and, and keep in mind, it's not just the activities after church or outside of church. Right. This would also be youth church Sunday education type thing. So we've got children downstairs during for Sunday school. It'd be great if we could have the same type program for the youth, but it goes back to you either need volunteers or you got to pay somebody. And so we're asking to have that paid person to help us build that. Sandy. I just want to get some change of subject in this. Go for it. Um, I want Mark, Mike, would you sort of analyze the whole business about having a mid-year challenge and how it affected the budget for the whole year and what happens in the future and is that a strategy to do that or just i mean i'm just interested in what your analysis is of that. well the analysis is really pretty simple which is that we had to do it <laughs> uh, we we were looking at what at that point was uh, we thought maybe a $50,000 hole in the budget. It had actually turned out to be more a much bigger hole than that. Uh, and so we had a few people in the parish who were willing to step forward and create a kitty 
uh, to be matched by others in the parish. And that kitty was $25,000. And it actually resulted in another fifty-six dollars or $57,000 coming in. So is, is it a good annual strategy? Uh, it, there, uh, there's yes answer to that, and there's a no answer to that. <laughs> the no answer is you'd like to have a budget every year that's fully funded by the parish, so you don't have to do a mid-year challenge. The yes answer is um, this is not an original idea. It, it actually came to me through our parish in Hawaii, and our parish in Hawaii does a mid-year challenge every year. It's just part of, you know, if you're in that parish that there's going to be a group of people in the middle of the year who create a kitty and that if you can add to your pledge or if someone makes a new pledge, it's going to be matched. Um, I would prefer as treasurer not to have to have a mid-year challenge every year. Uh, but this parish responds to need and I would say next year, if there's a need, then the parish, in, in the interest of transparency and sharing all this information, the parish needs to know that there's a need there. Um, so a lot depends on how the parish steps up to the plate now uh, in, uh, in this uh, period of stewardship. The parish is going to tell the leadership, um, here's what we think we should fund the parish for for the coming year. And if that's adequate, that's wonderful. If it's not adequate, then we're going to have to think about that going forward in terms of, do we change the budget? Does the vestry say we there are some things we just can't afford to do? We can't afford to add a youth minister. We can't buy new tables. We can't do some of the other things that the vestry wants to do? Uh, or are we going to go ahead on with a, a faith budget, if you will, saying somehow God will provide during the year? And that may mean another mid-year challenge. We'll know, we're going to know a lot more in the next month. I think we'll have a pretty good idea of uh, where stewardship is going within a month. I was struck by my own reaction to the mid-year challenge, the kitty business. And I told you that, I think, at the time. Uh, it made me, oh, people have put in already. They really think this is important that we've they established a kitty. I don't know, sort of psychologically mm -hmm. or in terms of sort of mid every year budgeting of a parish, whether that kind of a strategy uh, works or fits or makes sense that the kitty just yeah setting but, up a kitty. Yeah, well yeah i mean everybody's motivated when there's like oh i can somebody will match what i'm giving or that, that it feels cool has already decided this is so important right but historically we haven't had to do this out of just making ends meet but we have had a lot of fundraisers where there's been something tangible mm -hmm. right you want a better audio visual yeah, you want yeah. a better organ and there we've had the same kind of response, I think. It's been, yeah, you know, people organ, are saying, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing something for it. I want that for my church and here's And the work in the parish. And, yeah. and, and we talked about that. And, 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 and you know, you said that we respond to need. And I think we respond to need, but we also respond to story. Um, and and what, what we're doing here is we're telling the story now. This is the story of where we've been. This is the story of what we've done. This is the story of where we want to go. So that we don't have to come in and say, oh my goodness, there's a need. We're going to come in. You know, in the same kind of way, the need is there. Oh. Can we talk about it, articulate it in the beginning rather than when it, when it strikes or when I feel a pinch? Nadine? I was just going to say, just to kind of remind myself, but we, that challenge was based on a real desperate need. Right? Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah, sp spending 20000 before, desperately before Easter, <laughs> so that we had working plumbing. Yeah, that, that, and that was an expense that we couldn't avoid. You, 
the way the church is built, we have to have those types of things working. Well, if we're going to continue to build, to, to grow, we need the youth ministry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We it, it'll continue until that go. It's not. I don't get. Enough. Yeah. It's it's not going to sustain the church long term either. I think that was the big, the big thing that came out of our survey of the congregation. As we talked to various groups, various small groups, and everyone survived the high school program and getting younger families into the church to grow. Because that's what we have to have to grow. Any other questions? Good. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 Yes. Well, I did a quick question because I want to backtrack on the insurance. Yes. Are we on an actual cash value basis or replacement cost? Because I know that there's a difference. In replacement. Premium, it is replacement cost. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Which a, is a lot more than it is a lot Correct, more. right, yeah. And, and that's if that's a would ever like compare the difference in premium. I don't know if we have much of a savings. I we don't have much choice. Yeah. So oh, right. So we have to use the church insurance. They cover Episcopal churches across the country. We don't have any choice. We did look at deductibles, right? You did a lot right. Of we we looked at deductibles and we looked at the umbrella, but yeah, the, the six million is definitely replacement cost because this Building for the county is not six million dollars. <laughs> you looked at liability too, right? You looked at that. Yep. Yeah, we and we. Not that real. Material. Yeah, it it was two or three thousand dollars a year. It's not going to move the needle enough. So I would think the skylight leakage would be the priority. That's yeah, they're they're getting quotes on it. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's not going to be that. We don't think, right? Uh, yeah, I think. A lot of repair, but I know, I know good drywall in this church. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's not me. It's not me. It's terrible. Yeah. I own the ladder for them. Yeah, the, the, the skylight, there's a strong, depending on the final cost on the skylight, it is possible that we can get that repaired before the ha, snow flies. No, yeah. um, but, <laughs> but, but we'll see. Yeah, no, not this week. Um, but, but, you know, possibly before some major storms. Um, it's It leaks. That skylight is original from when that part of the church was built, and the seal and the skylight, it's just, it's time to get it repaired and replaced. So it's probably, yeah, it's weather. Doesn't seem that bad. Like it doesn't huh? Need to be the parking lot. parking lot doesn't seem to be. Jim's, Jim's the godfather of the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, yeah. right. So, the strategy is. He's right there. Mm -hmm. Jim, oh, yes. So the strategy, Jim, is when we keep resealing it, then we don't end up with a major replacement. Mm -hmm. And we, we had to replace the parking lot, it cost about $60,000. So what we're trying to do is make sure those racks don't get too big that we can't repair them. Mm -hmm. and, and in order to do that, we need to reseal it every couple of years. And that's saving us from a major expenditure. Mm have -hmm. we thought about getting rid of that skylight? Just closing it up so we don't look at things in the future? Uh, well, it, it, the skylight's been there 30 years. I know. So, you know, I mean, if it's lasted 30 years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just wondered if it would be. And it does give you some light in that hole. It is nice. Yeah. I, mean, I just wondered if that yeah. would be a cheaper option. Yeah. It might cost more to fill it, to close it up. Yeah. But, I might, I just, like I said, yeah. I just wondered if that would be That's the problem with Skylight. Well, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Consider that. Does anybody know about checking with chat GPT to solve this problem? <laughs> <laughs> artificial intelligence. If you can't say, we've got a budget problem, solve it for us. Just in play. That's what the kids are doing, right? Yep. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Thank if you, you. if you do have questions, feel free to reach out to Mike or Gary or myself and we will uh, help answer those questions for you. Thanks guys. Good strategy.